Hey team, today's episode is all about this lovely lady here, Lila Jana. She is a activist, CEO and founder of two companies that are changing the world. We also showcase how you can create a pretty phenomenal smoothie bowl. And uh, I think it's your morning routine, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. It does not taste this good when I make it though. So. <laughs> Check this one out guys, we loving everything inside. Lila Jana, welcome to the <laughs> studio kitchen. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. Of course, it's uh, it's a pleasure to have anyone who is the. I, I like. Well, obviously, we introduce you as a, a founder, a CEO, but I love the activist side. Um, you know, I think it's really important to highlight when we start to get to a point where we're gaining some sort of traction with the message that we're using it to give back for the right reasons. So, hearing what you're doing, I can't wait to tell your story, hear your story, and uh, you know, hear where it's uh, where it's going. So. Um, before we get too much into that side, I want to deal deeper into who you are um, and how you came to be. So, starting with where were you actually born? Because I knew you grew up in California. Yeah, yeah. I was born in upstate New York. Okay. Yeah. All right, nice. My poor tropical Indian parents didn't realize what was coming to them, and okay. they uh, they immigrated from India to Lewiston, New York, or to, to Buffalo. I was born in Lewiston. Okay. So there were like eight foot high snowdrifts waiting for them <laughs> after tropical Mumbai. It was quite a shock. Wow, that they, is different. Yeah. It's different. They relocated to Southern California. Sure. So. Okay. And you know, eventually this will turn into you being. You know, seen as a technology guru by Forbes, uh, along with other you know major corporations, kind of you know giving you their absolute phenomenal two cents. But it's crazy to see someone in your position who has, like when I was doing research and hearing about what you've done, no matter the first thing that pops up is always about what you stand for, not what is. Mm -hmm. And so, is that something that's always happened to your family and your upbringing in those regards? Yeah, I mean, um, it sounds kind of cheesy, but um, my parents came here with very little, and my brother and I experienced the American dream. We both went to public schools, my family didn't have much money, and we managed to get into good universities and, and have careers that we were passionate about. Sure. And my dad would always say, you know, make sure that it's not lost on you that you won the birth lottery by being born in the U.S. And like, we come from a country of a billion people where a lot of people happen to be born in slums and in rural villages, and no matter how smart they are or how hard they work they'll never be able to to get what you have just by virtue of being born in America and so that was such a profound part of our upbringing and this idea that we were so lucky to have these opportunities handed to us that we don't live in a global meritocracy and that if we're in any way successful we have a moral obligation to give back um, and try to work on this massive inequity that still defines the world that's awesome I love that so. that's just essentially you've seen what you could be uh, and you know that there's something to be done. So, hence why you're building these companies, Lux Me, is uh, mm -hmm. one of them which we're going to talk about today. Sorry, uh, I can't search the web on oh, Apple Watch. Believe it or not, <laughs> Apple is interjected, and this is the best thing about technology. Thank you, Siri. Thank you, Siri. Um, but yeah, so you've got Lux Me, uh, mm -hmm. you've also got Summer Set, is that right? Summer Source. Summer Source. Mm -hmm. And what's, tell me, tell me a bit about those companies. Those, Tell me a bit about those two companies. Yeah, so um, so both are based on the idea that the best way that we can tackle so many of the problems that we see in the world, from maternal mortality to lack of clean drinking water in developing countries, is not through aid or charity, but by giving people economic opportunity, by giving them living wage, dignified work. So the mission of both companies is to give work and measurably move people out of poverty. And I started the first company, Samasaurus, now 11 years ago. I was 25 at the time. And I was working in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. I was really frustrated with this aid model of like giving handouts, essentially, to low-income people. And we often in the West think, oh, well, you know, how sad it is that these poor children don't have shoes when they walk to school, so let's give them free shoes, or let's build a school for them, or let's build a well for this poor family that doesn't have drinking water. But the reason they don't have those things is, is because there's no, they, they have really low household income, they're living in poverty. And if they had a living wage, if they had a living wage job, if the parents did, then they would buy those things for themselves and they would have some agency in, in crafting a vision for their lives. And, and this is the core, you know, the root problem that is underlying so many of the issues that we're trying to solve through philanthropy. So I saw this firsthand. I worked for many years uh, in the NGO world in Africa, and I got more and more frustrated with a really paternalistic approach, which is like, well, you know, all you're capable of is receiving a handout from the West when people want so much more. So I started Samasource with the vision that we could use the digital economy 
uh, to provide jobs for young people in East Africa who are coming out of high school, who were really literate, who could read and write, but had no job opportunities. And we started getting contracts from Silicon Valley companies doing things like data entry. And I started teaching people in East Africa to do this work locally. And that's grown into now the largest AI company in Africa. We employ 2,000 people full time. And they're all from very poor backgrounds. And on average, we increase their income by 500% once they start working at Samasource. So it's this give work model at scale through the digital economy. And, um, and that led me to travel a lot to East Africa, which I love. And I always love going to local markets and picking up jewelry and you know, different ingredients that I find for cooking or for my skin. And that's when I came across the ingredient that sparked my second company, Luxme. Uh, which is Nilotica. Okay, we're going to get into that in a second because um, I want to pay a whole special attention to that. But before we do, let's let's put paint a bit of reality here. I think as a CEO, someone more importantly, this is an activist, as someone who's just human, realizes the root problem of something as you identified. I think that's that's priceless because when you start to you know put a band aid on something, it, it's great, but eventually it's, it's going to come back. When you provide an opportunity for empowerment. Uh, I, I, not only are you teaching skill, you, you're creating help, opportunity for life and growth. So not only the fact that you are looking at ways to you know, provide someone in those unfortunate areas the opportunity to make decisions for themselves, you're actually laying the foundation for that to take place. I, I've always been interested in myself to create kitchens in third world countries, not create food opportunities directly. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is I want to create empowerment. So the fact that you are on the same path because you recognize the importance of empowerment and self-sustainability for life growth, that is that is exceptional. And the fact you're actually doing it, that's, that's, <laughs> that's one thing to say and talk about it. The fact you're actually doing it, I love. Um, so personally, just hats off to you. Thank you. Before we continue to go down that path, which we are definitely going to, I want to hear more about your upbringing uh, and how that has defined your, you know, your personality and your action because you're a doer by the sounds of it. So, uh, you, your, your parents were born, were they Calcutta? Is that where they grew up? Yeah, my, my mom grew up in Calcutta. She okay. was actually born in France. She had the craziest whoa, story. Whoa. So, yeah. French Indian? Yeah, so, well, actually Belgian Indian. So, my, my grandmother <laughs> was this amazing, like, she's like a character in a movie. Her name was, was Christiane Zeebrook, and she was uh, born in Belgium. The family fled during World War II to the south of France. And then she and five of her college buddies set off on a trip around the world in 1948, starting with just $5. And their mission was to hitchhike around the world and uh, earn money along the way and go only overland. So they never took any planes. They just, they hitched rides in cars. They walked, they took camels. They literally, they rode camels across North Africa. They, I mean, it was just the craziest journey. And she actually wrote a book about it, which like, I think there were like 1500 copies made or something called um, Le Tour du Monde avec 5 dollars, Around the World with $5. And she just had this That's incredible actually. wonderlust. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a movie needs to be made about this story. <laughs> um, she ended up meeting my grandfather, who was from this artistic um, communist family in India. His, my grandfather's brother was this documentary photographer who had documented the British-caused famine in, in Bengal, which killed millions of people and which helped spark the Indian independence movement against the British. So my grandmother met that family and ended up falling in love with my grandfather. He followed her to Paris, enrolled at the Sorbonne to woo her, and then they ended up getting married and my mom was born soon after that. And then they, they moved back to India and started a ceramics factory. You know, so. when, um, <laughs> you know when your friend says, I know my friend's sister, relation to a second cousin, and you're trying to catch the whole thing along. I personally just felt like your whole entire family tree deserves a book. Because each individual story you carry there, I was like, whoa, there's another tangent I'm going on. Like this, yeah. this whole, like it really, it kind of expresses you as a person because it's, it's a wild, like storytelling of a family of, of different parts. And what's beautiful about it, it's helped shape who not only you are, but the rest of your individual family members are as well. So I can see where the, the adventure, uh, you know, lies and the, how, you know, that, that kind of story is driven from from these experiences, maybe not you've seen, but through what your practical parents and grandparents and yeah. their friends have done. So that's really, wow, I can't wait for that book to be read. So <laughs> on, on that note, you did you ever find yourself 
following a train of you know traditional thought of uh, an Indian upbringing that you know maybe a bit different to say an American in Southern California. That's so interesting. So my parents were both like really kind of seen as crazy by most Indian families okay. because my mom came from this really artistic family. Sure. They were super creative. They were total hippies. They were very left of center, even in India. My father um, went to Jesuit school and came from a, a, Cat, a Syrian Christian uh, family. They, they went to Catholic Church in Kerala. So there's a branch of Christianity that's been rooted in India for centuries. And so they also were quite kind of liberal and quote unquote westernized in that they, you know, they didn't follow the caste system or anything like that. And then my parents met and had what's called a love marriage. They didn't have an arranged marriage, which was the norm in the 70s when they met. So they were already kind of totally weird by most Indian so standards. They didn't have a regular Indian wedding. No, not at all. Wow, they, that, they were married in a courthouse in Cleveland, no. Ohio. I've yeah. had an Indian wedding is one of the wildest, most awesome like weeks of someone's totally. life. To be honest, I personally have never been involved in an Indian wedding okay. as an Indian person. So this is just a tragedy. I'm actually getting married this year, and it's not going to be an Indian How wedding. How do you so feel about that? I, mean, I feel like I'm owed one. Okay. <laughs> gonna, okay. So, is do you have a brother or sister? I have a brother. And is yes. he yet to be married? He's already married. Oh. Um, so, and he's gay. So, um, there are fewer Indian weddings for same-sex couples, sure. unfortunately. But I feel like, in in many respects, my family is not the traditional Indian okay. family. Well, that's the beautiful so. story of your family you know maybe so. if you were to have an Indian wedding that is quite you know traditional it'd be weird it would be totally guys. weird yeah, you'd, yeah you're like oh I have to do the norm like, there'd have to be like a social justice element involved yeah, okay. and it would have to be totally eco yeah. and sustainable yeah. and yeah okay. you would have to all do handstands walking down the aisle all that kind of stuff something like that um, <laughs> unreal okay and so for that reason like you, I don't know what you mean oh okay <laughs> series back <laughs> You know what? No, I'm, I'm, taking my, I'm just going to, for those listening, I'm just taking my jacket off because uh, you can, believe it or not, believe with Apple, you can turn a safety mechanism on to prevent Siri from chatting, but I don't know how to do that just yet. Um, so you were, you were saying how, where were we up to? Uh, oh, yeah, got it. How long have we got? Perfect. So non-traditional and that, I, I kind of like envision there's got to be some sort of cricket, you know, aficionado <laughs> kind of, Yeah, is there something there? Well, you know that Indians are like the least athletic people on the planet. We have like a billion people. We have plenty of like Nobel laureates. We have, can you name any big Indian athletes? I mean, I can by oh, saying can. MS Dhoni, you know, Ganguly. Cricket, cricket. Cricket okay. athletes, that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we have the lowest number of Olympic gold medals per capita of any country in the <laughs> well, world. It doesn't help when you have a billion people. <laughs> but yeah, true. generally when you have it's a true. billion people, you're more likely to have, yeah, okay, I feel what you're yeah. saying. And parents kind of encourage kids to go into like math and science and you know yeah. computer engineering more than they do gymnastics or sport what so your, would your parents kind of you know support you with so I was really lucky so we had a really kind of unusual upbringing in that um, my parents wanted us to follow our passions and we also didn't have much money so okay. I had a lot of like you know people I knew who got sent to belly lessons and got really programmed I actually think it was a great gift that we didn't have the money to afford lots of classes so my brother and I kind of figured it out for ourselves. I was really passionate about dance and I always wanted to take ballet, so I had to get a job. I was a babysitter and I had to save up money to pay for ballet lessons so that we could afford it. But I actually think that kind of hustle that I had to, um, I had to hustle from a young age, I think it really helped me and it certainly like helps when you're an entrepreneur to know how to figure things out on your own. Yeah, I definitely think you appreciate more the little, like when you appreciate the little things that you know, it means that you will then, when you get something, you'll cherish it and you won't think of it as a, uh, you, you think of it as, as like, you know, you, you are very fortunate to be in this position, but you'll still look at ways that you can take, you know, that dollar and use it more expansively than say the average totally. person, you know, totally. and that's really cool. I think in that situation, if you were, if you were still self-sustained and happy, uh, which sounds like you have a beautiful family network, which really supported each other no matter what, that's, that's the heart of everything, you know, and it can, it can show that. You know, I, I have a very supportive family. I call them indirect supporters because they still don't know what I really do with a chef. Uh, here we are having a podcast in the basement of a studio kitchen in New York and they're like, cool. You know, like, We don't understand how yeah, you make money from yeah, that, yeah, but yeah, exactly. all the best. You do you. you, do you. Uh, and I think that's what's really cool as a family. I know that I'm still just tied to them in, the, in a really nice way. Mm -hmm. Speaking of tied, what was family meal like? What was, was it every, every night you would cook together or was it, you know, some nights you'd have your own responsibilities? How, how was that at the dinner table? 
It's so funny. I'm really glad you asked because my mother was one of these early adopters of a super healthy diet. Like Ooh. she had tons of books. Do you remember this book? There's a book called Prescription for, I think it's called Pre Prescription for Nutritional Medicine or something yes, like this, Mom. right? What's Mom's you know name? What I'm talking about? Martine. 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 Lovely name. Yeah. So she... She was like into all this health stuff way before it was cool, way before there were like acai bowl I shops. I feel on every like corner. your mom's like the, the, the first awesome, like hippie kind of awesome, holistic, knowing person. Am I right in saying that? She was really into holistic medicine. Yeah. She really believed a lot of the things that are now kind of mainstream today, like things like acupuncture yeah. and Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah. Um, my mother would tell us about them, and she was always kind of skeptical of any doctors that would sure. dismiss all of this. Sure. She was she was into a lot of these alternative healing practices, and she was also into eating healthy food, which yeah. I'm so grateful for because like processed sugar was banned from our house. Okay. Um, which meant that whenever I had a sleepover, I would like binge on Lucky Charms. <laughs> But I think it like adjusts your palate, yeah, right? Yeah, and I'm so so she used to like she she worked. She and my dad both worked. We 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 didn't have much money growing up, but she really scrimped and saved and cut coupons so that we could have healthy food. And she would right. cook food often at the beginning of the week and leave stuff in the fridge. So your mom, um, your mom defined meal prepping. Yeah, your she mom totally is did. the meal prep. She was wow. the meal prep. She this whole prep. time you hear these companies that are like you know what meal prep is. Uh, I guess stereotype to be, mm -hmm. and here you have you got your mom who's been doing this for many, many, many years. That's exciting. Does your mom? Is your, are you close with my thing? No. So sadly, like I mean, this happens. I think a lot with really creative families. Her family was like a lot of artistic genius, but also a lot of dysfunction. Okay. So to be totally honest, we we don't have the closest uh, knit family, which which is which is kind of sad, but. Um, but I think as you get older, you kind of come to terms with all of the challenges that you might have experienced as a kid and you, you start seeing your parents as people who were trying their best, right? And so even if things weren't perfect, I'm so grateful because I, I got so much from my upbringing. So we're not, we're not really close now. Maybe we will be one day in the future. Do you still try to connect the dots? Yeah, we do. I mean, we're like in touch over email occasionally. We don't see a lot of each other in person. Okay. Um, but, um, but maybe now that things are calming down a little bit for me on the work front, sure. maybe in the is, future. Is that the, like, what's the dysfunction? What's the main thing kind of? Oh, just everything. I mean, my parents, um, my parents both struggled financially. Yep. Um, my mom actually had, you know, lived in an RV for a time. Um, she, she never really was able to have a steady job. Uh, They've, there have been mental health issues in my family, so quite a lot. Um, but again, I, I kind of think a lot of these things that, um, that we feel... When I was a kid, I was, I was really upset about a lot of these things. I was really depressed that I didn't have the perfect family that I thought, like every American kid, had mm. you know, this white picket fence, like you know, two-parent household, and they had enough money to like, afford to spend money on school you know, trips. My parents would send me on school trips. Um, you know, field trips with like just a few dollars and my friends would have enough to buy meals and stuff. And now I look back on that and I think, well, you know, if I hadn't endured that kind of struggle, if I hadn't figured out things for myself, um, and also, you know, my parents, if they hadn't been so gifted in many of the ways that they're gifted, uh, I wouldn't be who I am. So uh, I think a lot of the people who, who I know who came from those quote unquote perfect backgrounds didn't end up having the drive or motivation to be entrepreneurs. And so in a way, it's a blessing, even the hard stuff. Yeah, you're definitely grateful for your, for your perseverance. Uh, and it shows, you know, like I think, you know, anyone can really relate to the fact that whenever some sort of adversity comes along, they kind of a, it's like a fork in the road. When the adversity sets in, you can either go one road or you can go the other. And, you know, the people who find a way to see it, use it as an example of what not to do or how to benefit from it and go forward. They're people that will look at you know these challenges and face them in the right way, which sounds like you, you definitely do with a grateful, with a grateful way. Um, would you consider yourself the anchor of your family? No, I mean, to be honest, like we're really not very close. Like no one really, I think my brother is in closer touch with my mom, but like sure. we're all kind of, we're all pretty distant. So I wouldn't say there's any anchor or nucleus, um, but I think we've all sort of settled in now. Um, I think everyone in our family has now a primary partner. I got engaged uh, last year to a wonderful person. Congratulations. And I think uh, perhaps in this next chapter of our lives, now that we've kind of settled our, our home life, my parents got, got divorced and they each found different partners. Um, I think maybe that's going to be the, the opportunity to heal and come closer together as a family. But 
Who knows? Who knows? Exactly. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break here from one of our sponsors and we'll be back to hear more about all the other awesome things you have going on in your life. Sure. With all that in mind, you've also got this phenomenal company, Luxme. Now, I'm holding up the product of the actual butter itself, yeah. but it all starts from that story, as you said, from this beautiful nut here. Now, yes. for those playing at home, want to know what this is, actually, I'll show, show the lovely, lovely, yeah, that's it. Right here. What, what, what am I holding here? <laughs> that is a Nilotica nut, okay. which I smuggled into the country, so I probably Badass. shouldn't be announcing that. Okay, but, um... we have not. <laughs> this is a fake. Would this, is this like a... Inert, nice. like heavily radiated Nilotica nut, so it doesn't have anything bad in it. Um, so this is an amazing nut. This is a rare heirloom varietal of shea butter, and it only grows in certain parts of East Africa near where the Nile River originates. Hence why so, Nilotica? Exactly. Oh, That's why the subspecies is Nilotica. <sighs> you got it, Einstein. Oh yeah, we're well, <laughs> aren't we? I keep forgetting more of video. Um, <laughs> I think that was great. I like. I love that enthusiasm yeah, for this you. nut. Um, I certainly feel that way about it. <laughs> um, so, so this is a really cool ingredient. It's um, it's a rare type of shea butter. It only grows in northern Uganda, South Sudan, and parts of Ethiopia, which is why you probably haven't heard of it because the region was in a civil war until very recently. Mm. And what's amazing about Nilotica, so most shea butter, which is, shea butter is also an amazing ingredient, but the vast majority of shea butter that we know in most mainstream beauty products comes from West Africa. And when it's in its raw form, it's kind of hard. It's a bit like beeswax. So to do anything with it, you have to soften it up, you have to warm it up, you have to mix it with an emulsifier. What's amazing about Nilotica is that this nut, when cold pressed, creates, can I do this? Can I show you this yeah, butter? Yeah, please. It creates this butter that looks like it was made in the lab, it looks like it has all these synthetic mm. emulsifiers and ingredients, but this, the only thing in this tube are 50 of those nuts that have been cold pressed. 50? 50 nuts. All right, so I am... Squeezed into this tube, and like, look at the texture of this, it's insane. Yeah. Um, it's like a butter. For all those who've seen Joe Dirt, when I say I'm rubbing the lotion on my skin, you should know what I'm talking about, <laughs> rubbing the lotion off. Oh, no, it's I'm, so good. This is really... It's so amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> This is dangerous. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, men can use it too. You yeah. need to be like an adverse. This is ridiculous. I mean, I, I don't know how far I can... Uh, how PG are we right now? Because I can <laughs> take this. Uh, oh, okay. My girlfriend is going to love this butter. <laughs> can I tell you? Okay, while we're on the non-PG topic, sure. I'm just going to make it... I shouldn't even talk about no, this. No, let's, let's go on However, out. okay. Lube products are mostly petroleum based and have things like silicone in them. They're like terrible. Interesting. I don't know why more people aren't into using like coconut oil or this Nilotica butter, which is fair trade, certified USDA organic, huh. and one ingredient, right? And so, I mean, your skin absorbs 60% of what you put on it directly into yeah. your bloodstream. And so instead of, you know, absorbing petroleum crap that is, is at the root of so many mainstream skincare brands, people could be using this. So, I mean, yes. <laughs> so for those who are I mean, interested, also for your face, yeah, for of other course, purposes. All those but... things. It, it, does, it does feel quite naturally oily. Not the yeah. oily uh, you'd get from, like, you know, the greasy oil. Yeah. It feels really Little nice. Oil. And you yeah. kind of want to keep touching yourself with it, yeah. like I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you want to keep it, like, below PG. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's... I, 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 feel, I feel clean and healthy at the same time the natural oils... I just kind of want to keep rubbing myself, to be honest. So you know what it is? Rubbing so my hands. I want to keep rubbing hands. my hands. I want to keep rubbing my hands, to be honest. I can't believe that we got so wow. like, x-rated on this. I mean, we just had to. We, we had that. When you got lost me with 50 nuts, so this is not like a nut. The nuts are involved. Okay, but but the thing I, I like to say, like, you know, dirty can be fun, but your skincare shouldn't be dirty. <laughs> Other things can be dirty. And what's crazy to me is like we still, even products that are quote unquote dermatologist recommended for babies are, contain known carcinogens, like artificial fragrance. The thing that's crazy is that a lot of the products that have this texture that are available at a drugstore have this texture because of an ingredient called petrolatum, which is the main ingredient in Vaseline, which is petroleum based. I mean, imagine like it's like crude oil, a crude right. oil derivative yeah. that you're putting all over your face and your skin. And when there's this amazing stuff available, and I think the reason we do it is that we kind of, until recently, have had this belief, especially in the Western world, that things made in the lab are superior to things made in Mother Nature. Mm. And food has now turned that on its head. We're now realizing that like 
unprocessed things that come from plants are much healthier for our bodies um, and for our minds than, than things that are made in a lab and put into all kinds of terrible processed foods. And the same thing is happening in skincare. So Nilotica is amazing. It's actually used as a, a cooking oil in northern Uganda when people are out of their normal cooking oil because it's quite expensive. So you can cook with it. You can heat it up. It doesn't, um, what's that thing that oils do when they heat up? Is it oxidized? Yeah. It doesn't, it has like a higher, I don't know. Essentially Thank it's got you. less compounds in it. Oh, okay. react to the heat and then yeah, cool. Yes. Which is my next higher question. Higher smoke point. Is higher smoke point. I know. <laughs> yes. Let me so get off So you can cook with it. Please get chef. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, so let's talk about the actual makeup of fat. Now, what, what type yeah. of fat we're we working with here specifically? So it's packed with essential fatty acids and the reason it has this buttery texture is it's really high in olein, mm -hmm. oleic acid. Oleic, yep. Um, and so it's got 25% more essential fatty acids than traditional shea butter, which is right. why it's got this buttery texture. It's also got catechins, which are the same antioxidants found in green tea. Mm -hmm. um, it's packed with vitamin E. So vitamin E is a natural preservative, which is why you don't have to add any preservative to the butter when it's pressed. Great. And it's got vitamin A as well. Fantastic. So, so. you've got two of the... The essentials, the A, D, and E, and K. Mm -hmm. And I love uh, the thought of using this on, like, I cut my hands a lot, whether it be working out or whatever. Um, or chef. Yeah, exactly. Scars everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. And that's where, like, obviously something like this can come in handy. But it sounds like, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not that often you have a product that you can use for cooking your skin. Um... Other, as a makeup remover, yeah. I use it as a makeup re remover every night. I travel a lot and I That's hate having awesome. 50 products. You can just like rub it into your skin like an oil cleanser and then just wipe it off with a warm washcloth. And instead of putting these cleansers on that strip your skin, have you heard of surfactants? You know what surfactants no, are? Surfactants. It's even in um, kitchen soap. Any any kind of soap that suds and has that like white sudsy yeah. stuff and we normally associate that with clean, we should associate that with chemical surfactants, which are terrible for us. Sure. You don't need to have suds to be clean, mm -hmm. right? And when you do that, especially in those cleansers that you rub on your face and they foam up, you're actually stripping the skin of its natural oils. And if you have acne prone skin, I used to break out a lot. It that actually makes it worse because when you when you strip the skin of oil, it overproduces oil in reaction and destroys the balance of your skin. And it also messes up the, the microbiome of your skin, whereas this Nilotica does not mess with your natural, you know, the natural good bacteria that are living on your skin. Yeah, it's uh, one thing to not ever do. It's like whether with your gut or with your skin, your microbiome are like you and they dictate who you are mm -hmm. and they are an organism that really represent who you are. But if you mess with it, it can affect your immune system. Uh, it can affect your alertness, your functionality. So that is definitely something cause you, you to give. break out. Yeah, right? yeah. Like cause your skin to dry exactly, out. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So then we know the product. How did the business come about? You know, obviously in East Africa, uh, you see this nut. You're like, okay, I see that nut, and I see it going to turn into this amazing oil that I can use across amazing things. And see you later. Obviously not. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, well, for me, business is a byproduct of a mission or a purpose. And any business that's just like there to make money, I'm, there are a lot of them. I'm not really interested in that um, because if I died tomorrow, I wouldn't want to spend my last day working on something that just made me more money. I would want to spend something working on something or spend my time working on something that actually solves a major problem in the world. And right now, I think the two biggest problems are global poverty, extreme poverty, and, and climate change. And the root of those problems is something that we can solve through social enterprise. So I know that sounds kind of weird, so I'll explain. No, so when I, 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 I don't <laughs> actually. I've got a couple of things in it myself, so continue, but I completely well, support what you're saying. Well, I had long been interested, so I started this tech business, Sama Source, um, 11 years ago in Africa, and I, I go back multiple times a year, and I always go and, and meet with um, producers. I love going to the markets and buying the Spangles from a Ugandan market. I love going and, and buying really stuff. Nice. Um, thank it's you. Really nice. Made by women locally. Oh, no way. Um, meeting the makers and talking to them about their products, and I came across this butter in a little tin in northern Uganda, and I thought, wow, this is the most amazing stuff. Like, what's inside this cream? And I discovered that the only thing in that cream were these Nilotica nuts. Mm -hmm. And I started asking around. And then I learned that the trees that grow this nut take 20 years to mature. So they're really these, these old trees. Many of them are much older than 20 years. And they were being cut down because you know people need to make money. So they'd cut down the trees, they'd chop it up, they'd burn it, and they'd make charcoal out of the wood. And then you can sell charcoal by the side of the road for like a dollar or two a day. So people were literally cutting down these ancient wild trees to make cheap charcoal because they couldn't find a way to monetize 
the nuts that grow on the trees. And I thought to myself, well, if we could grow demand for these nuts, if we could show people that wilderness actually has an economic value, then they're not going to cut down the trees. So we started doing this work. Um, I decided I would start a company and was really passionate about this one ingredient. So I said, let's start with Nilotica. And I started doing more research on plant-based ingredients and medicinal plants from around the world, especially plants that indigenous people have used for hundreds and thousands of years. Um, my own tradition in India has Ayurvedic medicine, which includes thousands of plants used in all kinds of remedies, right? There's Chinese herbal medicine. There's so many of these traditions that, that West Western, um, you know, I think especially in, in skincare and in pharmaceuticals that we've kind of dis, you know, we, we've not we've not taken them seriously. We've discarded them, and I thought, well, what if we could source more plants like Nailotica, and what if there were a conservation benefit to sourcing those plants, right? So if we can show people, if we can show these communities that live next to wilderness areas that they can actually earn money from wilderness and not have to sell their land to the mining company or the logging company that's going to cut down the trees and create a mine or sell the timber, but actually that something that the trees produce in the wild is actually economically valuable, then we can actually fight climate change in the course of building a social enterprise. Does that make sense? So every time yeah, that you're almost. buying these nuts, right, <laughs> you're, you're preventing deforestation. And it's the same model, you've, you know, you're a chef, you know about all these superfoods from the Amazon. The acai story is really similar. There's an amazing company, Sambazan, that markets acai, and acai only grows wild in the Amazon. So by making this a real export market for Brazil, they've basically shown the Brazilian government that there's a lot of money to be made in the forest by keeping the forest wild and not fucking it up. Sorry, can I say that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so... So that to me is so interesting. A lot of conservation groups are now starting to think this, this model is called conservation incentives and many smart people have been working on this long before I have. But I thought my contribution could be what if I can build up a market for more of these rare medicinal plants. And we know that wild plants, wild ingredients, tend to have more nutrient density than their farmed counterparts, right? Correct. The soil is less depleted. Yeah, and the, 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 it starts from the soil. So essentially, mm -hmm. you're looking at a way that the root system is not being put into a systematic, you know, mono agricultural way, mm -hmm. where the roots can actually still work off each other and then you know replenish the soil, vice versa. Yeah. Um, if it's in a way that they are farmed to, you know, the natural state, they will naturally grow to what's good and absorb the nutrients it's you know meant for them yeah and the far, you know what's beautiful about this region in northern uganda is that there hasn't been a lot of commercial activity there's no giant factories there never were i mean people could never afford to buy pesticides and fertilizers to spray all over the crops and so as a result the soil is free of a lot of these industrial you know contaminants that have found their way even into organic farms in the u.s it's a big challenge right the, the water is contaminated yeah. right so even if you you don't spray your crops so I, I just became fascinated with, with rare plants. I, um, I have a friend who's um, in, involved in ethnobotany, which is the study of, of how people in indigenous communities relate to plants and how they use plants and you know the linkages between the two. And I just became fascinated with more ingredients like Nilotica. And as we've grown, we started incorporating more rare plants, first starting with Africa, but now we're working uh, in Suriname, in the northern part of the Amazon in South America to source a rare kind of Brazil nut in partnership with an indigenous tribe. Um, I'm actually gonna be signing a contract with the chief of this village in the middle of Suriname. You, you can't get there by road. You have to like fly there in a bush plane. So Is that so cool? And it's his way, I mean, this chief is basically showing his community that they can take control of their economic futures. They can afford to send their kids to school, right? But they can do that without destroying this beautiful land that they live on. So, so that's the mission of, of Luxme. That's just, <laughs> the mission is, uh, again, once again, I've asked you how it'll come about and we haven't even talked about you, how, how you got it from that into a product system. You talked about the mission the whole time. <laughs> it shows a lot about who you are. And I mean, I mean that because you, you can, not that anyone who was then at that point going to say, oh, I got it from this, 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 a wrong, like a bad person. It's just to show what your, what your focus is. Your focus is your mission. Your focus is not about you. It's not about the product. It's what the product does. Uh, and that's that's really exceptional, you know? And you're taking the same thing you've done in the same system and being able to have the same impact, not only in 
you know, East Africa, but also South America too, which is really exciting. That's like, that's, that's, really that's pretty awesome when you think about it. And I know from, you know, the indigenous communities of Australia, when you get invited in to these tribes, <laughs> that's a big deal. To be speaking to the chief, that's a huge deal because they don't often let, you know, anyone in from the outside. And if they're continuing their traditional ways, they see a lot in you. So that is a huge, credible check to who you are. Uh, you've obviously connected in a way that's yeah, very advocated by the highest of levels for those individuals. So on that note, we are going to take a quick break and hear from one of our sponsors, but we're going to hear a lot more when we get back. Team, as you guys know, every episode on the podcast, we do some sort of recipe because we're in the studio kitchen. Now, Lala, you brought this beautiful Luxme product for us to use. And what do you have every morning? A smoothie bowl, yes. actually. So, because we're keeping to the brand of this and, of course, the smoothie bowl, we're going to create a Nihilotica nutty banana smoothie bowl. Yum. With Nihilotica nuts. Exactly. Better. Exactly. Love Straight it. up. Yum. Now, there is an art to creating the perfect smoothie bowl. What you need to do is make sure you get the right amount of liquid to banana. Now, freeze your bananas. Step one, night before. So, my hot tip here is have Maddie. Because Maddie then sends you a reminder to freeze your bananas. But if you don't have Maddie, just set one on your own phone. It's fantastic. It does just as well. Thank you, Maddie. So we've got the frozen bananas. Chop them into like little cubes, just like that. And you can, honestly, if you guys have seen, uh, you may have seen my three ingredient banana nut ice cream. We're going to go down mm. the same vein here. So we'll put that in the show notes down here as well. So Do you thaw them out a little bit before tiny you chop bit, them? Okay. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. Ideally, you want to keep them as hard as possible. Um, yeah, like, I, honestly, it, is. it depends how the blade of the, the, the actual you know, blender goes. Because if you have a really, really tough blender, well, it's not really, there we go. If yeah. the blender doesn't want to cooperate, you have to, obviously have to soften it up a little bit. So, you need, like, a small jet engine under yeah, your blender, you basically, you to make this little. work. <laughs> so I'm just going to add a little bit of milk. And we've got almond here today, so we're going to go dairy. It's going to be, uh, we're going to call it a vegan situation. So just got a little bit of... I'd probably say about probably a quarter cup, a quarter of a cup, yeah, using my chef eyes. And then we're just going to put the frozen banana in. I'm going to add, you can, uh, Lila, you can add in your beautiful yeah. Lux Me okay. nut butter Ooh, situation. Yeah. Okay, so this is safe enough to eat okay. because it's only one ingredient. It's actually used as a cooking ingredient, so I eat it all the time. I'm just going to put a little dab in here. Did you say, did we say, what are you going to do? A little dab, oops, it stuck to the <laughs> side. <laughs> is that a lot? Should I scoop it off? Oh, I no, think did that's you okay. wash your hands? You yeah, I wash my hands. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. What, what, what do you, what'd you say? How, how much you put in there? Like a little dab, like not too much. Just one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Little dab. Dab. <laughs> <laughs> Were you doing that behind me the whole no. time? No. Oh, God. I asked for it. Okay, okay. so there's a Nilotica situation in there. There's a, there's a great situation. So all we've got is three ingredients. Almond milk. Nut mm. butter, in this case, Nihilotica nut, and mm -hmm. banana, frozen. And now, yeah. we give it a little shake. Love your work, Don. Did you turn this on? No, there's a switch in the back. Oh. Woo! smoothie goodness happening. You can see it starts to come together. By adding more bananas, you start to get to even more of a consistency that you want because it's going to engulf more, but we've got three today. Do we have more? Don, can you get some more frozen bananas for us, brother? You need to add more. I always get the ratios wrong. Is well, that like too it depends, or too it, it, it depends on how much mm. of the actual blender surface area you have. Yeah. So some blenders are shorter and you can get away with it. Yeah. Three. I have a like, Vitamix, which is narrower. Yes, yeah, so, so you can get away with it easily. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, it, it's it's generally speaking, I do one quarter cup of milk to about three bananas. Yeah. And so how much do you butter? Yeah. You know what else I want to do? I actually want to put um, truffle, like actual truffles with the Nilotica and wow. make a vegan truffle butter. Oh, that's oh. sexy. Because it actually has a lot of the same properties as a butter. Like it has that oh. salt and it has a slightly like nutty taste. It would go really well with savory food, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, like you don't get a, like a sweet. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And it's more kind of, 
I think it lends itself better than coconut oil to savory flavors. Yeah, isn't it great? It's really yummy. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh. It's, I like it's butter. It's butter. Like butter. It's like eating butter, right? So don't you think it'd be but so good with like buttier. a truffle infusion yeah. or we should collaborate on something. Maybe that we can make nice. a butter together. Oh, I'm gonna kiss so good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you really will. And it will be chemical free. Thanks, Don. So Don has politely gone and picked up some more frozen bananas. Thanks, Ledge. So as you can see, depending on the blend that you have, it will help determine how much, uh, I guess, bananas you need. If you've got a shorter or if you've got a small surface area, the blade will get around them more, so it makes it easier. So we're probably going to yeah. chuck in another three. You've and are these like right? They're very ripe bananas, right? Yeah, I actually, I actually okay. froze these probably about a month ago because I have a ha massive amount of because because of Charlie Street we're using for certain things. Yeah, yeah. So we have a lot um, we go through. You can't have enough frozen bananas no, on hand. No, everyone must. Hand. Here is a hot tip: always have <laughs> frozen bananas in your freezer. They go like they they just the bet makes smoothies that much more enjoyable personally because mm -hmm. think about it: you don't need ice anymore, so you're not diluting the flavor through water or frozen ice. On that note, are you getting, are you getting all that? I'm getting windswept by the back of this blender. <laughs> it's like a jet engine over here. Seriously. What's your um? What's your smoothie bowl of choice? Um. Oh, I do tons of stuff. I do green bowls sometimes. Oh, yeah. So um, frozen kale, spinach. I also have like 50 frozen bananas on hand at all times. Um, is that sea salt? It's sea salt. Ah. Yeah, so that's going to bring out the accented sweetness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like a salted caramel yeah. situation. That is yeah. looking mighty fine now. Wow, that looks beautiful. Cool. So, now, we all know the smoothie bowl, the base is half the battle, right? It's what yep. you top it off with that makes it even more phenomenal. <laughs> so, we've got here some goodies. Some, uh, we actually use, this is granola. Mm -hmm. You can get any granola you like from your local yep. rustic homeware goodness kind of place. Or you can come to Charlie Street and pick up ours. Little plug for Charlie Street. Yeah. So What's this, in your granola? This one's a uh, cookie and cream granola. So we uh, actually put this in on top of our chia. Mm -hmm. So it's just got cacao, it's got sweetened by maple syrup, pinch of salt and cinnamon. Really simple. So also vegan, totally vegan. Totally oh, vegan. Great. You can actually um, go to my website if you need to for, I think there's three or four awesome granolas that are really simple to do. So, Head to danchurchill.com and you'll find some goodness right there. So let's uh, let's make our smoothie bowl. So yeah. do you want to get your knife skills on? Yeah, let's do it. Do some work. I don't have on. any knife skills. You don't? I'll try okay. not to chop my fingers off. Well, that's a good start. That's a great <laughs> start. I'm gonna grab a knife. Oh, thank you. That small one. I'm okay. gonna take this big Thanks. one away. Safer. <laughs> that. So you find yourself, you know, I guess creating this product. All right, yep. now, we talked about what it stands for, but you come back to America and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm gonna start selling it. Like, you took, took me through that kind of path. Yeah, well, I just like, I, I started using it myself and I have really dry skin from traveling a lot and um, I was always, my mom would always say, this is like an immigrant parent thing. She'd be like, okay, save money on everything, literally be as cheap as hell whenever possible, except when it comes to your face, because you only have one face. So you should always buy the most expensive skin cream you can afford. So that's like can my favorite. Can I for a second? I, we had two <laughs> girls behind the camera, and both of them were just like, both Ali and Maddie were just like, that's, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, true. exactly. That's, that's like, that's what our moms tell us, right? It's like, you can skimp on anything else, like buy the yeah. Payless shoes, right? Go to Goodwill for your clothes. But your face, you only have one face. So that's what always, that's what I was always My told. My mom never said anything on that, so I'm clearly uh, It's because you're face. a dude. You yeah, don't have true. to worry about it. This is true. Like, wrinkles can be cool for dudes. I think they're cool for women, actually, too, but that's another story. Um, so... I would go to like duty free and buy the most expensive cream I could afford thinking that that was the best one. And sure. then I found Nilotic and I was like, this is amazing. And how is it possible this has only one ingredient? And I started reading the ingredient labels on the creams that I would buy at duty free. And there were things like red number five, you know, dimethicone, mm. petrolatum, petrolatum, which is Vaseline, which is petroleum based, like, yep. like crude oil based, is, yep. is a main ingredient in some of the most expensive skin creams you can find at Duty Free or at like Neiman Marcus. So what the hell? And I thought to myself, oh, this is such a sham. Like, why am I spending all this money on something that is literally 
toxic and I'm slathering it on my face every day. It's not like I'm just, you know, exposing myself to it once in a while. I'm literally like soaking myself in this thing that's, that's toxic. And then I learned that the U.S. doesn't really regulate skincare ingredients. We have a lot of ingredients that are known carcinogens yeah. that we put on our bodies that are not allowed in products in Europe or Asia. And so I got more and more angry and I felt more and more compelled to start a clean beauty brand that would celebrate these amazing wild superfoods that come from plants. And that's how it evolved. So I started off, I, I raised some money from friends and family, then I started selling it. I, I got onto QVC. Um, actually, <laughs> I ate yes. it. I ate it in the pitch meeting. They were like, "We don't really believe you." I was like, "No, no, no it's safe enough to eat." And I like scooped it out and I, I ate a, a little sample. Um, we sell at Sephora now, and now we're we're really building out our direct to consumer site. So we sell it a lot on Luxme.com. That's awesome. So that's great. And when, so do beautiful. you find yourself selling more for the food or the more the skincare side of it? Only skincare, but I'm starting to think I'm I became vegan in January this year, and nice. it really changed my whole perspective. It also made Made me feel a lot better and healthier yeah. and um and i swear by this stuff as a butter yeah, the one cool. thing i really miss is a good like truffle butter mm. so i want to make a truffle butter out of my lot of good nice. that's a good option <laughs> that's a really yeah. good option yeah have you tried it the butter the bowl the butter so, yeah so yummy yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. okay i just dropped a strawberry where oh how good that's a big thanks all right am i good can I mean, my hands on this? yes, you totally can. All that. Okay. Oh, that so looks this, this so looks super beautiful. Colorful. Yeah, that's great. My that's... only contribution was like chopping the strawberries Which and not my fingers. Which are phenomenal <laughs> cutting of strawberries, Yum. by the way. How good. So, Ali, can you get a photo of us? Do you mind? Like while we're recording? Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, I've got a just... lot. Okay, you got a lot. Okay, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, cool. So you're now at an opportunity where. Your, your product as well gives back, doesn't it, directly? Mm -hmm. Other than mm -hmm. obviously what it's going to do yeah. for the for the countries. And the, you know, the, other than what it's going to do for the actual countries themselves and the people yeah. in those countries, yeah. how else does it actually give back? So um, this uh, Nilotica butter is certified fair trade, which means that women are paid living wages when they harvest it. That's and brilliant. the money is going to women, um, the region that we harvest in, uh, as I mentioned, the reason people haven't heard of this product is that there was a civil war going on for 20 years. And so most of the women who harvest Nilotica were impacted by that war. Many are war widows. So you're, you're directly fighting poverty when you buy fair trade products in general, and specifically Luxme. Um, and the other way that you're giving back is you're promoting biodiversity by creating an economic incentive to keep these trees, these beautiful Nilotica trees that these nuts grow on, you're, you're keeping them alive by showing people they can earn a living through sourcing these nuts sustainably. That's awesome. So not only are you creating a means of, again, talking about, you know, you're creating opportunity for empowered growth, um, but you're also, again, building a product that then can also tap yeah. into it. So And a product that's great for your skin with, I mean, not only is it not toxic, it's so weird that we like advertise non-toxic as an attribute. Sure. It's like, wait, it's 2019. Why should non-toxic be a good thing? Yeah. Like you should be striving for more than not poisoning mm. yourself. <laughs> so not only is it not toxic, it's actually totally good for you. It's packed with all those amazing things, vitamins A and E and catechins and essential fatty acids and all the good plant fats that we know we need in our bodies. So Nailed it. Yeah, good. <laughs> Well, on that note, like, what's next for you? It sounds like you're doing so much already. Do you have time for oh, anything God. else? Like, what's, um, what's the plan for Well, that? I love I love sports, okay. and um, we bought a place in Africa, in Kenya. Oh, wow. So I love spending time there. I love, I'm, I'm a big kite surfer. Cool. I just went last, uh, yesterday. Wow, that's actually tough. Weekend. That's it's tough. really hard. Yeah. It's really hard to learn. It and really then, is. Um, it's the most amazing sport because... If you're like me, you're probably the same way. I'm always thinking about the stuff I need to do for my businesses, and I'm always like absorbed in that and not really enjoying the present moment. And with kite surfing, if you're not focused on the present <laughs> moment, you're gonna get totally screwed. You're so, gonna get like dragged across yeah. a beach. <laughs> so to put it in perspective, uh, kite surfing is somewhere you have to learn to control a kite in the wind, uh, so that obviously you know that's that, that in itself is one cognitive experience. The other side is you've got to do it whilst being on a wakeboard uh, and being having the right tilt, firstly to start, to get up, then go across and hold the kite in the right manner, yeah. then do a figure of eight if you want to turn around. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, look, it's, it's uh, I thought being a surfer from Australia, I, I wouldn't pick it up straight away, but it's definitely, definitely a lot going on. So, as you said, if you're not concentrating 100% on that, then uh, you, you're not going to go anywhere. 
So and it's the blessing. best thing for entrepreneurs. It like totally focuses you on the present That's and so makes you That's stay awesome. in the moment. So unreal. Yeah. So you got that. Are you uh, and you're obviously building out the. The, obviously the direct consumer with uh, Luxme. Yeah, yeah. We're adding, um, we're, we're launching a really cool plant serum later nice, this year. Nice. So it's made up of over 30 rare medicinal plants from around the world, okay. including this ingredient that I'm sourcing from the Amazon yeah, yeah, nice. with the um, with the tribal leader. So that's hopefully awesome. we'll sign that contract in the next couple of months. That's so happy. that's the next big launch. And so if with all this going on, what would like a typical day in the life of how it look like, like. Oh God, I don't really have a typical day, but I do have some things that I try to make sure that I incorporate every sure. week. Um, so you mentioned that you get up early to work out. Yep. If I don't work out every day or every other day, if it's uh, if I'm really busy, I start going stir crazy. And for me, the best workouts are in nature. So I really, I, I'm in California half the time. I started surfing. I'm a terrible surfer. Nice. But because I can do it in the morning before work, and when the windy season is, when the wind is low, um, I go out and it's the best workout to go early morning, go surfing for an hour or two, and then you come into work and you're just like totally zen out. You're done. Um, and if it's, um, and I kite surf if it's windy season and I can get away for like an hour in the afternoon. Um, and then uh, what do I do? I make a smoothie bowl. I'm I'm vegan now, so I do a lot of I do a lot of my cooking at home, and I bring my food to work. Um, I work with my team. Uh, usually, I have meetings most of the day. If I can, I try to take my meetings while I walk. That's another like pro tip. Nice. Is instead of sitting at a desk, I started standing a lot more. It's like much better for your body. Yeah. And then if you're gonna have to do a work call, you might as well be walking while you're talking to the person. Of course. Or if I can with a colleague, we'll just go for a couple walks, uh, laps around the block. Sure. And then um, in the evenings, I try to cook at home. I go to bed really early. I'm like a super nerd. I go to bed at 9.30 or 10. Guys, we're going to so. wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like almost bedtime for me. Always getting there. I like, if you, if you run two companies, there's really not a lot of time for much else. Yeah. So um, I have a fiance. We spend time together, but I don't really go out that much. I read a ton. Okay. Um, so. That's like, I think that's something we talk about is balancing that life of, uh, you know, obviously being an entrepreneur. It is so focused on your brand and your company and all your companies mm -hmm. uh, and what you're driven to work towards the message sometimes it's really important that we all take a step back and if we can't look after ourselves and those things don't grow so that's really cool you still set aside that time to read i think that's reading it's not content it's actually the brain's ability to chill Absolutely. out which is really cool so yeah. if you were i always ask this question it's you know if, i love hearing because you can tell a lot about a person by it but if you were a, a food or a dish or an ingredient <laughs> what would you what would you be Ooh, well, um, I am obsessed with Brazilian food. I lived in Brazil for a time, sure. um, and I still think the best acai is, is in Brazil, the okay. best acai bowls. So I would probably, this sounds so cheesy because now they're everywhere, but I would probably be an acai bowl. But from Brazil though, right? <laughs> yeah, a yeah, Brazilian, yeah, Brazilian. Brazilian acai berry. How about that? Oh. You're a berry. Let's go OG. You're, you're, I'm you're, a berry. You're, you're the original gangster. I'm, I'm not even diluted. I'm not. Wow. I, I've never seen a Vitamix. I'm <laughs> an acai berry from the fucking Amazon. There you go. Straight <laughs> up empowered. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. If Thank we want to so hear much, more, Jim. where we can find out that you and your, your companies? Yeah. Well, um, I'm at lilajana.com. Mm -hmm. L e i l a j a n a h dot com. And then Luxme is l x m i dot com. And Sama Source is s a m a. Sama and then source.org. Fantastic. And the director, like, where they find out to actually purchase the product itself? Yes, you can buy Luxme on Luxme.com. And if you sign up to our newsletter, we send out discount codes and invitations. We're hosting a plant safari in June oh, in that's Kenya. That's exciting. So we're bringing people to see some of these rare medicinal plants. Oh, and, um, that's epic. A little, like, yeah. direct food tour from where they all hear. That's exactly. Epic. That, that, exactly. That, wow. We got to come and do a chef one. We got to do Nilotica truffle. I'm together. not going to say no. <laughs> not going to say yeah. no. Um, <laughs> well, just yeah, again, I, I'm a, as I said, a big fan. I've met you today, a big fan of what you stand for. I, I think when you've got a driven message and purpose that's greater than any of us, it's it's always inspiring to me. So to hear you doing that with not one but two companies is is pretty exceptional. Um, and I, I believe you're onto some pretty you know, great things. You already are, but you know the world is still. Still got a lot to do, and I think you are one of the people that actually will drive towards that. So it's been a pleasure having you here today. Thanks uh, so much, Dan. And, and as always, uh, tasty times, and I really appreciate you, you know, even getting off a plane, coming straight here <laughs> to hang out with me in the studio kitchen. It was my total pleasure. Thank you so much. Of course, guys, make sure you check out more about Lila and what she's doing. I'll put everything in the show notes down here. 
And of course, if you really want this recipe, it's going to be out here as well. You know you want to eat this. I'm going to get into it. We'll probably taste yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. I know. We haven't even tried it. Yeah, let's do it. Don, you jealous?